What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the exact moment wrestlers' lives were changed forever. Wrestling is a dangerous sport. It's very dangerous. So when people say it's fake and all this other stuff, I just sit there and I look at them and I'm like, you tell that to the people that got injured in the ring. You tell that to them that it's fake. The stories may be predetermined, but some of the moves that they do in this ring are legit and couldn't hurt you. And can injure you not in, like that's why you know not everybody can be a wrestler not everybody's meant to be a wrestler because if they could then people would do it but it's not easy you gotta know what you're doing and people do get hurt unfortunately that's why i respect those that get into this business whether they're in wwe aew new japan whatever company i respect you for getting into this business because it takes a lot of heart it takes a lot of grind it takes a lot of patience and skill to know what you're doing so we're going to check out some of them instances where, you know, people ended up, unfortunately, probably getting hurt and they were never the same again. But appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one, man. Wrestling is fake? Say that to these guys who can't walk, see, or have other life-altering injuries due to horrible mistakes that happened in the ring. In 1990, a wrestler named Chuck Austin received a huge opportunity when he got to compete in a WWE match. Austin had only been training for six months, and this seemed like the opportunity of a lifetime. Unfortunately, the young wrestler's career would be cut short, and his life would never be the same. Chuck Austin was put in a tag team match against Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels, the Rockers. Due to a combination of little preparation and Austin's lack of experience, a tragic mistake would be made. To close out the match, Janetti hit Chuck Austin with his finisher, the Rocker Dropper. Chuck landed head first on the oh. mat and he instantly knew his neck was broken. Oh. The fact that his life would never be the same soon settled in. My left hand doesn't have the grip strength to hold drinks. In the aftermath of the injury, Chuck Austin sued WWE for negligence and sought $3.8 million in damages. The jury, though, did not agree. Instead, they ordered WWE to pay Chuck Austin $26.7 million. WWE did appeal the ruling, and ultimately, the matter was settled out of court, with WWE paying Austin $10 million. Damn, so initially he wanted three. The courts was like, wait. Hold on, I just gotta read that right. Wait, I just wanna read that right. So, cause it seemed like he initially wanted three. The courts was like, nah, you, they need to pay you more. And then they settled. Hold on, let me, let me double check. Did not agree. Instead, they ordered WWE Austin sued WWE for negligence. In the aftermath of the injury, Chuck Austin sued WWE for negligence and sought $3.8 million in damages. The jury, though, did not agree. Instead, they ordered WWE to pay Chuck Austin 26 points. So the jury was like, nah, that's that's not enough. We want them, we want them to pay at least almost $30 million. That's crazy. Seven million dollars. WWE did appeal the ruling, and ultimately, the matter was settled out of court, with WWE paying Austin ten million dollars. So he ended up getting more than he was initially just gonna do. That's wild. But once again, no amount of money, and I'm gonna be honest with you, no amount of money can replace not being able to fully function, like using your hands and feet and feet and legs. Like no amount of money can really replace that, but it can at least help with the medical bills and and your recovery. It's the least. Damn. While the finances were good, the reality was that Chuck Austin's life was completely different. Over 20 years after the incident, Chuck Austin was completely confined to a wheelchair and Damn. lived in constant pain. And right now, I spend 80% of my time in the bed. And that's with medication? And that's with the medication. The only thing that allowed him to bear it was painkillers. Chuck Austin did not seek revenge on his opponent. And that's crazy. Once again, like I just said, it, yeah, you got, yeah, you got millions. But you're always in pain. You have to take pain meds to deal with the pain that you're always in. Wow, oh, man. But this next wrestler did. Extreme Championship Wrestling was a company built uh, on wrestlers performing crazy stunts. Yep. Jesus Christ. While many wrestlers got hurt and even injured, most did make it out without seriously altering their lives, but not everyone. During the yep. Living Dangerously pay-per-view in 2000, one of the scheduled matches was between Vic Grimes and New Jack. The ending oh, of their fight no. saw the two battling on top of some nearby scaffolding. The plan was- Yep, I know how this story went. Oh boy. Yeah, New Jack. Uh, yeah, he, uh, mm. he's the type that if you definitely injure him, oh, he's gonna give you a receipt. And the receipt may end up damn near killing you. 
for the two to fall off the structure and go crashing through two tables. However, once it came time for the moment, Vic Grimes got cold feet, and rightfully so. This resulted in New Jack pulling Grimes down, which caused Vic to land on Jack's head. Oh, gets a balance. Oh, oh, my oh, God. God. Vic Grimes walked away without any serious or life-altering injuries, but the same could not be said oh, for New Jack. No. The impact fractured Jack's skull, caused brain damage, and made New Jack go permanently blind in his right eye. New Jack also suffered from daily headaches and insomnia for the rest of his life. Unlike everyone else in this video, New Jack would seek revenge. Yep. Two years after the incident, New Jack and Vic Grimes would have a rematch. Not learning from the last time, the two fought with a giant scaffolding structure above the ring. Once both men were on top of it, Jack pulled out a real stun gun and used it on Grimes. New Jack mm -hmm. then threw his opponent off the structure with the intent of killing him. Miraculously, Vic Grimes survived and only suffered a dislocated ankle. It's easy to see. Yeah, bro. He, he just threw him off like he didn't give a damn, bro. Look at this. Look, he just threw him off. Would use a real stun gun. He's like, I, I remember watching the little documentary they was talking about it. He didn't give a fuck, bro. He tried to kill him. He was like, no, fuck you. He tried to kill him. Really? I'm recording. Yeah, I, I'll be I'll be in there when I'm done. Yeah, man, that was wild. Jeez. To see how a big stunt like New Jack falling to the floor would cause life-altering injuries, but even simple moves can do the same. On August 16th, 2003, Steve Carino didn't realize it, but his life was about to change forever. Carino began wrestling in 1994 and was best known for his time in ECW. While he wrestled a handful of matches in WWE, Steve was never signed by a major wrestling company. Once Ring of Honor was founded in 2002, Carino became part of the company during its formative years. At a show in 2003, Steve Carino fought Homicide in a No Holds Barred match. Ironically, it wasn't any weapon that would permanently alter Steve Carino's life, but a simple move. The two had only been wrestling for a few minutes when Homicide did this. Oh! oh. Homicide slapped Steve Carino so hard that Carino's eardrum was ruptured. Carino oh, continued and finished damn. the match, but he permanently lost hearing in his left ear. In oh. other cases, a botched move indirectly leads to someone's life being altered, and that's the unfortunate case with Jake Roberts. In 1987, one mistake completely altered Jake the Snake's life. During an episode of WWE Superstars, Roberts was hosting a show, The Snake Pit, where he was interviewing the Honky Tonk Man. At the end of the segment, oh, yeah. this happened. Oh yeah, he got hit with the guitar, yup. Oh my god. It looked like a normal wrestling stunt. However, the guitar Honky Tonk Man used was not gimmicked properly. Yeah. This caused Robert's neck and spine to be seriously injured, and he was lucky he didn't become crippled. Mm -hmm. Robert's wife even had to pull fiberglass out of his back for two weeks. Ooh. Jake's lawyer suggested he sue WWE, but Jake Roberts' love for wrestling prevented him from taking his employer to court. Unfortunately, the injury left Jake in constant pain, and the only remedy that worked was painkillers. Roberts became reliant on these pills and developed an addiction to other drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. As well. This eventually started to affect Jake Roberts' ability in the ring as well as his personal life. You want to play 21? I got 22. So I'm nailing him. And if you look at the tape, the stuff looks fake because I'm talking to him, Jake, come on, just give me a DDT. That's it. And this whole thing is fixed and he is not working. In 2000, Jake Roberts' wife would leave him due to his addiction. Things got worse and worse for Jake until fellow wrestler and friend Diamond Dallas Page stepped in. In 2012, Roberts moved in with Page and was able to overcome his addiction and do a 180 on his leg. Then, in 2014, Jake was welcomed back to WWE and inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well, my family, my girls and boys, please stand up because you're my heroes. They gave me a second chance. God bless Damn, the WWE man. because they gave me one too. Well, Jake Roberts' story has a happy- And it's crazy because that all came from an injury. Getting addicted to the painkillers and stuff, it, it caused his life to spiral out of control because of an injury. And he didn't even want to sue WWE because that's how much he loved wrestling. That's wild. Happy ending, this next wrestler does not. Imagine losing a job with WWE simply because of what someone else did. That's the reality for Devin Nicholson. Born in Ottawa, Canada, Nicholson became a wrestling fan at a young age and knew he wanted to make it his career and eventually wrestle for WWE. Devin was so passionate about becoming a professional wrestler that he turned down scholarships to pursue his dream. He trained with the legendary Hart family and competed in his first match in 2001. Devin Nicholson eventually got the name Hannibal and performed all over the world. While Devin was living his dream, his goal 
goal was still to get signed by WWE. However, that would be taken from him. During a match in 2007, Nicholson fought wrestling legend Abdullah the Butcher. As was the norm for Abdullah, the match is bloody and violent. At one point, Abdullah cut himself and used the same razor blade cut Devin. Nicholson didn't realize it at the time, but that one incident resulted in his life being completely altered. After spending close to 10 years as an independent wrestler, WWE finally came calling and offered Devin Nicholson a contract. I called my dad and my, uh, my dad was so happy. It's like, finally, like I may have been a disappointment, but at that moment I wasn't. It had all been for, like it was all worth it. I wasn't an idiot for turning down the scholarships. I didn't waste my time doing this stuff and it all paid off. Unfortunately, the good news was only temporary, and Nicholson was slammed with a shocking discovery that altered his life. WWE rescinded the contract due to them learning that Devin had hepatitis C. Nicholson was unaware of how he got infected, but upon reviewing footage, he suspected his match with Abdul the Butcher was where it originated from. Devin Nicholson sued Butcher, and through a court-ordered blood test, it was discovered that Abdullah had the same strain of hepatitis as oh, Devin Nicholson. No. Not only did Devin have his dream taken away from him, but he also had the painful task of treating the infection. Thankfully, the treatment did work and Devin Nicholson was cured, however, WWE never gave him a second chance. Nicholson did get a victory over Abdullah the Butcher and was awarded $2.3 million. However, Abdullah didn't pay up and still to this day, Devin Nicholson hasn't seen a cent from his lawsuit. Mick Foley is- Yep, and that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing, it doesn't matter. You, It's crazy, you can sue someone, but if they don't have the money and they don't have the assets for the court to take, to use, compensate for the money, you you sued him, yeah, you won, but that's just it. Oh, that sucks, bro, to work your whole life to get to that one moment only for someone's carelessness. Like, why would he even do that? Like, why would you use the same blade to cut open somebody you just use a new blade? Like, that's, damn, bro universally known as the nicest and friendliest person in wrestling, which is why it's so sad to hear what happened to him. Whether he was Cactus Jack, Mankind, or just plain old Mick Foley, the hardcore legend was always willing to put his body on the line of to entertain course. fans. Can that hold of that course. Oh my god. While Foley sustained a number of injuries that he still feels the effects of to this day, one accident literally took a piece of him. In 1994, Foley yep, was wrestling a match in Germany against his rival, Vader. Foley planned on doing a spot where his head would get caught in the ropes. Mick had done the stunt many times before uh -huh. and knew how to perform it safely. However, the ring ropes were tighter than usual, causing Foley to get stuck and he started to suffocate. Thanks yep. to the referee's quick reaction, Foley was able to escape with his life. However, his ear had been cut. Oh. Despite the injury, Mick Foley got back into the ring and continued the match. Then, a blow by Vader caused Mick's ear to completely detach from his head and oh. fall to the mat. Once the match is over, Foley was taken to the hospital and treated for his injury. However, the damage was permanent and to this day, Mick Foley's right ear is deformed. Several uh -huh. wrestlers have had their entire careers ruined due to one mistake. To find out what they did, watch this video. Yeah, man. That's crazy. One, one accident could change someone's life forever. So uh, that's why I say I respect those that get into this ring because all it takes is one accident and then that person life is forever changed. So, but comment down below. Let me know some other videos you guys want me to check out. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K and I'm still here on Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.